Hello friends and family and welcome to the final day of the 2023 Dynamic Discs Open presented by Dynamic Discs. This coverage is brought to you by Ace Run Pro and this is your FPO Chase card. My name's Holly Finley. And I'm Connor O'Reilly and we are super excited to bring you guys this final round at the Emporia Country Club. Tons of out of bounds throughout this track, some gentle elevation change on most holes. A lot of options for these players, but also a lot of ways to go wrong and should produce a nice dramatic finish for us here. So I'm excited to see how the action unfolds. Take a look at that trophy. First up on the card, we have D.N. Carey. Team Lone Star Disc, her first season with that sponsor. Next up, world champion Kristen Tatar on Team Latitude 64. Third on the box, we'll be looking at Jennifer Allen, a veteran in the game, recently picked up a disc golf pro tour win at the Beaver State Sling. And another Allen, this time Katrina, very well known, multi time world champ, plethora of skills. Here we are on hole one, a par five, 999 feet out of bounds on the left and right. Off the tee, you do have a tree on the right side that a lot of players tend to turn over into if it is a headwind. Get your first tee shot as far as possible, the second shot as far as possible, hoping to crest over the hill. That'll give you a look at the basket where you can be precise with your upshot, hopefully getting inside circle two or one and having a birdie look. First up on the box, from Shelby, North Carolina, the 2022 Myrtle Beach Open champion, Deanne Carey. <laughs> Deanne gonna be throwing that curl on probably 70 plus percent of her drives that we'll see out here today. This time on Heiser and finishes in a great spot. A lot of room to throw another Heiser from there. The 2022 Dynamic Disc Open Champion and 2022 World Champion, Kristen Tatar! Let us remind you that our current leaders are at 11 down starting this round, so these ladies, especially Deanne and Kristen, have a very legitimate chance. Even Jen and Katrina, if they get hot. Kristen's side on the T is safe. Jennifer Allen. Jennifer Allen, a world distance champion. Definitely going with that aggressive line, but it looks to Got be a, a bit high. a lot of height on that, doesn't it? Ooh. And she is out of bounds on the left and side. And rounding out the box, Katrina Allen. <laughs> On a course like this, I expect to see Katrina throw just a lot of kind of low straight shots. That seems to be something she's been leaning on heavy when she has all the options. There's that tree that Holly mentioned. Very common good luck, spot. Ladies. Have a good round. We definitely saw some swirly wind today. A huge windstorm blew through last night, boasting some huge winds and uh, a little bit of leftover today. Seeing some swirling action. Katrina was <clears throat> under this tree in a previous day, and she was able to scramble from there. I love the umbrella trick. Holly uses the umbrella to create her lie. Katrina to get the disc. I guess you did both, uh, too. But. Deanne throwing the curl again. Yeah, if you can push your drive towards that left out of bounds, but stay in. You have the best line for another right hand back in. Kristen being a little further to the right of that fairway has to deal with squeezing it close to those trees so she doesn't take the out of bounds and it's gonna be a tough birdie from there. 
And Jennifer Allen went out of bounds off the tee, but even though she did that, she got such great distance from her shot, she could still scramble for par from here. Katrina Allen's third shot. I got a hyzer flip to drift shot. That is a beautiful shape. Lands with that nose up, gets some slide. Maybe a short up shot from there. From here, Kristen probably has about 280 to 300 into the pin. Hung that super wide, but played the down slope well and finds herself with a makeable putt. And Deanne carries close enough that if she wanted to, she could probably throw a mid. Just opting for a fairway. Yeah, came in a little hot. Maybe could have went with that mid-range like you were saying. It's a lesson I learned after day one. You can see Jennifer Allen's third shot was so close, she was using a putter, the Yeti AVR, for her upshot, and she smoked it. She's about 45 long of the basket now. That's going to be a hefty par putt. Yeah, she goes to that standstill pretty often from close and really gets some good power out of it, as she showed there. A little too much. Katrina, delicate upshot. Jennifer to save par. It's a drop-in bogey. Dan made some solid putts yesterday, especially inside the circle, but not quite able to capitalize there. Being under that bush is kind of sketchy. Kristen doesn't give that much of a bid, kind of a look like a 70% bid. It is more downhill than the camera is showing. Dan unable to make the comeback from the bush. Everyone was in good position to, you know, get a par or a birdie. Just some trouble around the green. Kristen will take a par. Deanne Carey will take a bogey. Yeah, being the fourth hardest hole in the course, not one that you necessarily have to score a birdie on, but if you want to chase down the leaders, you probably do need to try to give yourself an opportunity. Kristen had one just fairly short. Who's playing right in the middle of the pack difficulty wise? It's a par 4, 582 feet, plays generously up the hill on the second portion of the hole. That big tree we're just flying around to the left is really the spot that you got to beat off the tee. Whether you have power forehand, backhand turnover game, if you can beat that trunk, you have a straight shot into the green. I feel like this is one you want to just get to that left side, give yourself an open putt, don't try to perfect it unless you have a big forehand. Tatar up first. She's taking a very low forehand off the tee. Landing on the right side of the fairway often makes the upshot blind. Landing on the left gives you a luxury to see the basket for your upshot. Katrina Allen looking like Ooh. a roller. Did not expect that. Aggressive play, I like it. And it's gonna fall in the short grass. Extreme right side. Good distance. Deanne Carey turns her shot over a bit early, gets caught up on the first tree. Might not have been a bad thing to get knocked down early instead of continuing to the right into that shrubbage. You're right about that. Jennifer Allen lands a bit shorter than the others. It's Deanne up first. That'll be our fourth curl shot, only on hole two so far, out of the end. If you see that custom Diesel D outfit <laughs> she's got on, you can I actually purchase that at zonesportinggoods.com. Support your favorite player, Diesel Deanne. Kristen, big enough forehand to get up there, test the circle's edge. 
she is comfortable out of a straddle, so let's see if she can make good and correct off a whole one's miss. I love this shot. Jennifer Allen patent pending turnover. And she's got about a 60 foot putt at it. Not sure if that corner bush area is going to be in the way of her putt. Katrina with the longest drive. Ooh, going to that forehand. She was so far on the right side. But now she has a 40 foot putt for Birdie. And Dan busting out the forehand. She doesn't go to it super often, so good to see her working on it, trusting it. Oh. Oh, I loved that bid. I was worried about those corner trees, but she had a perfect window to give it a run. Katrina Allen for birdie. See that? Oh, no jumper out of Katrina. Just a regular putt, being that tailwind, thinking it'll stay up for her. Kristen deeper in the bushes than assumed, and no real look for her. Deanne able to capture a par here on hole two. Kristen will settle for a par as well. There's one player in this field that you'd think might be on that list of getting that first chase card victory of the year. It's going to be Kristen Tatar, but she's going to need to start scoring some birdies. Power mistakes are going to be okay out here, but I want to see probably a four or five down on the front. She always makes the chase. Here we are on hole three, a downhill par four, coming in at 466 feet. We have out of bounds on the right and left. Most players will fly through this gap off the tee, hysering into this little landing area on the left side. If you get a perfectly flexed shot or just the right amount of baby turnover, you can get down here and get a putt for an eagle. This is a generous par four, possibly the easiest hole on the course over the weekend. Kristen Tatar up first. Yeah, never found that easiest spot, but it was always third, I'm pretty sure, so stayed right there in that easiest bunch. And with Kristen's forehand, she's gonna have a pretty easy upshot from there, maybe in the 175 foot range. Katrina's shot is hysering a bit more than I think she intended, and it gets smacked down and still birdieable from there. As long as you beat that first row of trees, the upshot is something that players of this level are looking to get up and down on 85-90% of the time. Deanne turns her drive over a bit more than intended, but again, she's just got another 200 foot upshot to get a birdie. If anyone in the field can eagle, Jin is definitely one of the ones with a chance, but just a bit too much turn here. <laughs> That was way over the sidewalk. And the way the course is playing is I found that it's a bit windier on the front couple of holes and it seems to die down once you get around hole five, six, and seven. It just feels like the wind is not as extreme as it was at the beginning. Katrina gets up there for a birdie putt, as does Deanne. Stands to a little bit of turn, looks to be flattened out. Money. Still going. Maybe a beat in harp and 
lays it up there nice and gentle. You can see those flags waving in the background. Definitely enough wind to make these players think. Carry for birdie. Nice putt. Just an inch low off that front rim. Kristen makes good on her birdie putt here on hole three. Jennifer making sure to take her time, collects her birdie. And Katrina, looking to be the last player on the card to pick up a birdie, maybe here on the fourth. In the grand scheme of things, pars are going to be pretty fine. Especially on these first opening holes, maybe not three because it's on the easier side. But here we are on hole four. Only a couple harder in ranking 598 feet well downhill on this first shot out of bounds line to the left will come into play if you don't turn your disc a little bit out of the hand to clear the ditch your upshot's going to be much easier just having that good footing not having to deal with the weeds down there and nice shady green back here with some shrubbery long so you got to keep this one a good distance coming in tatar up first throwing a turnover it's getting some nice distance. Doesn't quite make it over the ditch to the next area. Deanne Carey turning over her curl. Like Kristen might have cleared the ditch, but still on that upslope, so not really to the good footing. <clears throat> Deanne maybe did the same. Hopefully out of the tall grass. We saw Deanne Carey have a bit of trouble with her run up inside that tall grass in the ditch on a previous day. Then playing the massive sweeping Anheuser and gets the jump to the top of the hill. More direct line for Katrina. Beautiful late flip there. And she is well over the ditch. Everyone in a birdieable position. And coming out flat. Gonna need a lot of check run on that hillside, but. She's been pretty strong in that circle's edge all weekend. Another tester for her. Katrina lands on the circle's edge with a look at a downhill birdie putt. And that was a lucky spot to land. Yeah, just past the ditch on the upslope, so she elects for that. Standstill and uses the side hill nicely, checks up just outside bullseye. Ooh. I think, did Jennifer take her earphone out to see if she could hear it go in? It looked kind of like it. Deanne Carey with a very nice long birdie putt. A very strong putting display from her so far this weekend. Katrina for birdie. Nice loft on that one. I love her sparkle viner, vinyl on her DGA stamp on her shirt. Jennifer capturing yet another birdie. Two in a row for her. Two in a row for Deanne. Kristen also makes good. Two in a row for her. Two for you, two for you, and two for you. Everybody on the board at this point with a birdie. Here we are, hole five, a par four, 523 feet. The sidewalk on the right is out of bounds, but the sidewalk that veers left into the middle of the fairway is not out of bounds. Ideal shot would land past this middle section of the sidewalk, 
give you a 200 foot or so approach into the green. It was a bit windy today, so you've got to make sure that you put some hyzer angle on your approach or use a bit of a more overstable approach disc. I've seen a lot of players throw straight, end up turning over on their up shot. Kristen Tatar up first, throwing a low turnover line. I expected something more aggressive out of her, but you know what? It's just a 220 foot up shot from there. Yeah, with her forehand, I think anything simple that's inbound, she'll have a very manageable approach, so just don't do too much on this one. Jennifer, on the other hand, looking to bite off a lot of distance. Not quite enough turn to really get down there, but she still will have a very short chip up. Katrina shy of the path, but likely a cutter up shot from there. Tatar will have a birdie putt. Yeah, Kristen knows with that forehand, even as bad as she throws it, she'll have a very manageable approach, so mature game plan for her. Deanne hanging out right in that heat check zone once again. Katrina with a perfect shot touching the koozie. Jennifer stands still. Goes for the spike play. Executes it nicely. Everyone looking at birdie. Diesel D up first. Oh. oh no, a bit of an air ball. Luckily it's still in bounds and she has a short comeback for par. Her first putting error we've seen in quite a few holes. Kristen makes good on the slight uphill putt. It's a turkey for her. Still your words, Holly. You did. Deanne makes good on her par putt. Jennifer joining on that turkey train. Can they add a layer of stuffing as we walk on to the sixth? That's what I like to call it. You get your turkey and then how many times can you stuff that thing? We all love our stuffing, don't we? looking to stuff that scorecard you're going to want to put it close here on hole six it's a 300 foot par three out of bounds on both sides but really won't come into play unless you have a big missed release most of these players are going to be going maybe fairway driver or mid-range Kristen we might see bust out that forehand just hit it flat let it fade a little bit at the end everyone looking to be inside the circle on this elevated stump basket Backhand mid-range out of Kristen. Looks to be maybe Claymore, Compass. She's at the circle's edge with the birdie putt, and even though the flag's not moving, there was a slight wind there today. Jen pulling over flat on a stable fairway. Finds herself just long of the basket. Katrina clips that V tree off the tee and it takes some distance off of her shot. She'll have about a 70 foot putt for a birdie. Yeah, she kind of stood up on that one a little bit. Maybe trying to hyzer flip and get a little touchy versus hitting something a little more stable flat. Deanne finds herself inside the circle. Three players with good looks at birdie. Katrina pitches up. She'll have to settle for a par look on this one. 
Jennifer, on the other hand, takes her fourth birdie in a row on this front nine. Christian, Kristen's strong in the left side chains. Indeed, after her first miss in quite a while, see how she feels. I love that view right there. Solid birdie putt from Deanne Carey. Katrina for par, taking no time at all. We're moving on to the seventh. Kristen and Jennifer have their tickets to the birdie train and they are trying to make that chase. Hole seven, what a fun tee shot. You have a small gap under that low limb. And if you try to throw straight, you have these trees on the right that you might hit. Let's say you get past those, then you got this out of bounds area here on the right side. Most shots will fly over this and hyzer short left. That'll give you about a 200 to 275 foot upshot into the green. The upshot is usually going under that low limb or a high spike hyzer. Two of those and you'll have a look at a birdie three. Tatar up first. Perfect looking tee shot, moving left quickly. Wow, we saw her catch that same trunk. Oh no, I'm thinking of someone else yesterday. Who do we? We saw someone hit that same trunk yesterday. Jennifer Allen hits the gap beautifully. She's also hyzering left quickly, and she is safe in the fairway. Yeah, if Kristen clears that trunk and skips left, she has that forehand approach that she's probably looking for. Now she's going to have to find some kind of backhand. Deanne knocks down short of the out of bounds bubble. Long way to go for birdie. Katrina with a nice hyzer flip through the gap. She's in a good position to attack for birdie. Deanne got caught up with those trees on the right side. It's on top of this a little bit with the tree kind of just close to her swing, but easy par from there. Oh, wow. Kristen's still going to that forehand, even though she's pinched on the tree. And the sidewalk is out of bounds, so saw how close that was. She'll have a birdie look at it. She'll even be able to walk it in, possibly, a little bit closer. Katrina choosing my favorite upshot route, the high spike hyzer. Ooh. Good line there. A bit shy. Very makeable putt, though she will have that headwind to face. Jennifer taking the highest of high routes. Puts it just behind the basket. Good left to right crosswind to put into. D's up shot right outside the bullseye. Tatar for birdie. Oh, off the top of the cage. Her putt's so smooth it just comes out with a lot of velocity even though she's not doing it's not a lot of velocity, but it's a good committed velocity, even though it doesn't look like she's doing much. Jennifer Allen takes her fifth birdie in a row. Let's see if Katrina Allen can get one. Yes, two Allens, two birdies. Kristen falls off the birdie train. Jennifer says, I am the captain now. Deanne able to save par after a shorted tee shot. Deanne's always listening to some kind of beboppy music in her AirPods. You'll often see her dancing as she's walking down the fairway. And as Connor mentioned at the beginning of this round, Deanne and Kristen were only two strokes off of the lead when this round started. And I know Deanne and I believe Kristen, they're always looking at the scores, so they probably know what's going on. And yeah, they're gonna wanna score birdies here on the eighth, that's for sure. But there's also treachery waiting on both sides of this fairway throughout the entire way. 
886 foot par 5. If your second shot can you clear this hill here, you'll have a reasonably easy upshot, though you will still have the low canopy of this large tree to deal with. Gentle right to left sloping green lends to, and with that combo with that low ceiling coming in, leads to a good forehand approach here. Jennifer Allen up first. The key to this tee shot is don't get it too high, but you also need to swing it out of bounds first and let it work back in bounds. And if you put too much height on it like Jennifer did, it's just too easy to hyzer OB. And unfortunately, that's exactly what she did. Katrina has a lot of exposed angle here. If that doesn't dig. And Katrina Allen also, just right out of the hand, you could tell it was a bit high, a bit extreme on the angle. She's out of bounds with Jen on the left side. Doesn't hurt to also just throw this shot flat or even a bit downhill. Take some of the height off of it. Kristen safe right in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, this tee shot is such a fine line. Ian hangs this out. Gonna need a lot of help. Come on, wind, push that thing. Sneak over oh there. My oh God. yes, by the skin of her teeth, Deanne is she safe. Gets. Deanne, all right, Kristen Tatar up first. Nice sidearm. Just looking for a short placement shot. That wasn't a very aggressive shot. If she wanted, she could have sent it double that length over the crest of the hill. But there's out of bounds on the left and right, and it's blind. She'll likely grab that same disc and go forehand once again into the green. Katrina Allen's third shot, pushing the sidewalk on the right, gonna let the disc work back to the left. Yeah, great trust on that shot there. See the wind whipping in the grass there. One thing about this shot is you can't see the basket. You just have to trust in your practice and your memory on what tree is lined up where the basket is and where you oh. want to aim and Jennifer Allen has misaimed and thrown her second shot out of bounds. That's two OB in a row yeah, for hers, Jay. Hers might have had a chance to come back in if it didn't clip that back side of the tree. Ian undercommitted there. It's not just a regular straight shot. Like Holly said, it's over this hill so the landing zone's blind and you have to either flex something or play it under stable and Dan. Another error there, stacks him up. Hole eight, stealing everyone's lunch money today. Let's see if Jennifer Allen can get it up in the circle and get herself a putt and get out of here. That's turning over more than you want. All of a sudden, hole eight. Oh, the tree oh, saved her, wow. the tree saved her. I was her. gonna say, hole eight might be stealing two players. Chances at chasing down the win from us here. You saw Tatar just went with that short conservative shot we mentioned. It was just the same type of copy and paste, and now she's got a birdie look at it. Yeah, very conservative way to play the hole, but Circle's Edge is probably kind of where she ends up getting a lot of times, unless she really gets the good ground play. Not a lot of risk, though, with the way she played it. Trina Allen, a very brave forehand, right outside the bullseye. And playing a little flex shot with her approach over stable putter. And leaves herself a longer putt than she'd probably like. This is looking to be a very stressful hole for a couple of players on the card. I hate it for Jen because she had such an amazing stretch of birdies going. Yeah, she is not able to work herself back left enough to have a guaranteed putt. Kristen staring into that sun. Not enough juice to get that one to drop in. Kristen just shy on that birdie putt. And this is a meaty putt for Jennifer. She does not connect. And this has just been a very troublesome hole for her, unfortunately. After such a beautiful string of pars, Deanne does sneak her bogey putt right over the edge of the cage. After going out of bounds, you know, a bogey is, feels pretty good. Jennifer Allen, oh, taking a triple. 
I hate to see it. Oh, oh Katrina. Mm. Yeah, I see that up and down putting style give her trouble on the close ones. You just hate because you know those short ones are, it's just a bag putt. It's the stuff you make when you're half paying attention, talking to your friend, looking over with your shoulder on one bag. You know? She can make that one in her sleep. In her, with her eyes closed. Here we are on hole nine, one of my favorite holes on the course, a par five, 719 feet. The tee shot's gotta go out of that out of bounds area. If it does not, you proceed to the drop zone. Otherwise, the sidewalk on the left plays out of bounds. The second shot's either gonna be a layup right here to this corner, or you're gonna be aggressive and throw an Anheuser or a forehand around the corner where you can actually see the basket for your third shot. Hopefully a nice little standstill pitch up or a jump putt and you'll have a look at a birdie four. Tatar up first. And that looks low. Off the top of the paywall, <laughs> barely in bounds. That was a world champ love if Game I've ever seen it. Millimeter shaves the top of the ad wall. Birdie though is gonna be out of the question for Kristen. And it's going to leave her with a four down front nine, most likely. Not exactly as hot as she might want to be to make those leaders feel a lot of pressure, but still a chance if she can get it going on the back. Katrina's shot lands safely in the fairway, but Deanne pulls hers over to the right side. She looks to be caught up in the woods on the right. And Jennifer, unfortunately, pulls hers to the woods, but she throws so hard it just ricochets out and she's back in the fairway. Oftentimes I've seen Jennifer throw right into a tree and just the power she has, it just breaks through all the little twigs and branches. I'm sorry, I totally forget this is a par five. It so is. So Kristen absolutely has birdie on the table from there. My mistake, you guys. Yes, Deanne's just about four feet off the edge of the fairway, so she's just pitching out for a better position and being more on the left side will give her an easier chance to make it up and around the corner. Oh, oh that's too aggressive. long. And Jennifer just going for a standstill placement up shot just sauces it and goes two feet out of bounds. And I hate that she had five birdies in a row and Man, it's just not what you want to do. Yeah, hard to tell if she just played a firm upshot there or was trying to kind of bend it around that corner a little bit. It's a very aggressive shot from Katrina. Clips the edge, but she's safe. Around the corner, top side. Pretty neutral reaction off of that hit. From this position, Deanne could get all the way to the bucket. What a shape. Oh, hits that last guardian, finds herself... Another test or cut. She's in the circle. And Tatar actually in a perfect position here. I believe she's going attitude savior approach disc on the forehand. Well done. She'll find herself at five down, not a scorching front, but giving herself a chance to get into that double digit range with a good back. If Jennifer can make this putt, she can still save par, even though she threw her upshot out of bounds. Katrina floats this a bit high, fading out. Might have those trees to contend with, but she's within 25. And Deanne does not connect for her putt here on the night, and she's left with about a 25-foot comeback. Solid par save out of Jennifer Allen. Strong putt. Especially after that triple on the hole before and then sending her upshot out of bounds. 
Yeah, at this point, I feel like for her, the pressure cap kind of came off a little bit in terms of chasing down the wind, so she's just got to go play, be aggressive, and maybe make a miracle happen by just pedal to the metal. Deanne will unfortunately have two bogeys in a row here on the front nine. It's not really the front she was looking for after starting only two strokes away from the lead. And Kristen, even though she had that short tee shot, still able to get a perfect placement, a perfect upshot, and she captured a birdie. Clean, five down front nine for Kristen. Jennifer and Dan were moving good as well, but eight kind of slowed the card down. A lot can happen here on the back nine. But here's a look at that leaderboard. Oh, Haley, three stroke lead over Kristen Tatar and Haley King. A lot of out of bounds. Tons of things can happen at the country club. In everyone's favorite hole 16. Appreciate you guys tuning in to this final day coverage of the Dynamic Discs Open. If you'd like to support Connor and I, we have some tour series discs available. The links are in the description. And if you'd like to support Diesel DN, you can go to carrydiscgolf.com and get your own Lone Star Curl with DN Carrie's initials on it and a lucky four-leaf clover. Ripping them things. <laughs>